Welcome to Commissioner's Corner, our holiday edition for December of 2021, closing out the year. Uh, we've got uh, myself, Scott Vargo, uh, your county manager, and then we've got all three of your county commissioners today, Elizabeth Lawrence, Tamara Pogue, and Josh Blanchard. Uh, so we're going to start with you, Tamara, uh, talking about mental health. There's been a lot of uh, recent conversation, a lot of uh, articles and uh, press with regards to mental health. So you want to talk a little bit about what's going on at the state level, what's going on locally? Um, yes, there's a lot going on in the conversation around behavioral health reform and how we make a system in Colorado that quite frankly works better for folks, um, consumers, families of consumers, pretty much everybody deserves a system that is better um, than the one we have in Colorado right now. Um, you know, there was a recent study that came out on the national level that has Colorado ranked as one of the worst in the country in terms of serving consumers and particularly in terms of um, serving youth. And there's a lot of reasons for that, but one of the primary reasons is the way in which the state, which is the largest funder of behavioral health, really um, funnels a lot of the dollars into one particular type of safety net provider. The types of providers that are really meant to serve everyone um, as a last resort. Um, and unfortunately, that system has been around for so long that it's really kept a lot of competition, a lot of transparency, and a lot of accountability out of the system. Um, and that's meant a lot of folks like those in some accounts haven't been able to get the care they really needed. Um, so there's been a lot of reform conversations over the last 18 months. Um, the governor created a task force to look at recommendations. Um, that report came out, oh, I think about over a year ago now. It had 200 um, recommendations. The report got turned into something called the Behavioral Health Authority that was created in the last legislative session. Um, that uh, authority will now have a new cabinet level position um, called the behavioral health commissioner and that person is in the process of being hired and will be appointed sometime probably at the beginning of next year and then we'll begin to implement a whole lot of reforms that I hope will bring better care to all of the people of Summit County. In the meantime many of you saw last week and then again this week um, there's a group of reporters in Colorado that have really been digging into some of the problems that we're seeing in the system and um, my understanding is there's going to be four more reports on some of the challenges that consumers are experiencing. So um, much more on that front. But I think the bottom line is that some of the much needed reforms at the state level, we will begin to see over the course of the next year or two. At least that's my sincere hope. Here in Summit County, however, um, we continue to do our very best to sort of plug in um, around some of the deficiencies in the state created system. We are very fortunate in Summit County that we have a military levy a local taxpayer supported um, infrastructure and so we have used those dollars to create um, you know a fund that pays for therapy for anyone in Summit County that needs therapy that's now being supplanted by dollars from the state that will pay for um, it's called the I matters campaign but it'll pay for three visits for youth who need therapy so there's 12 visits for anyone plus another three visits from the state for youth um, we've launched a variety of peer support programs particularly for youth um, we've created, uh, we're really excited that um, in January, beginning in January, um, we will continue to sort of roll out more infrastructure for crisis intervention and care coordination. That program is being called the Care Coordination Hub, and it'll be um, new providers that will operate out of some um, office space in the medical office building, so much more coming on that front. And then, of course, our SMART team, which is our uh, crisis response model in Summit County run by our Sheriff's Department, um, that program program is now up to almost 24-7 coverage. And so our hope there is where folks are really having um, medical emergency can get that care without having to go to the emergency room. So there's really lots of good stuff um, happening in Summit County, but obviously without support from the state system, um, it really does feel a bit like a drop in the bucket. And we know that there are a lot of folks that cannot still access the care that they need. And so um, all three of us are continuing to advocate on the state level for the desperately needed changes. And I am optimistic that that time is finally um, beginning to, to happen and um, changes, much needed changes are beginning to happen. Great, great. Thanks tomorrow, Josh. Mm -hmm. or Elizabeth, anything you'd like to add? Great work. Thank you. Thank you for all the work you're doing. Sure. Yeah. Great.
Um, all right, we will move. Uh, we debated this before we started the show, whether we wanted to go COVID-free for uh, the holiday edition. Uh, but then we thought there probably is a holiday tie-in around being healthy uh, over the holidays uh, as COVID is still with us. And so, Josh, you want to talk a little bit about uh, that? Sure. As much as we want to be rid of talking about COVID, it is still here. It still impacts our community. And so the theme really is to be healthy for the holiday season. We continue to have um, a public health order that really focuses on two areas. One is for masks for our youngsters in school and education settings. And then also uh, really continuing to monitor the, our hospitals uh, and, and making sure that we don't hit that threshold at 80 percent. Um, as long as those you know, two things are still in order, we're really continuing as business as usual with a strong encouragement for folks to continue to wear masks. Of course, we want to uh, congratulate our community at around that 90 percent uh, vaccination rate. That's incredible. Uh, we want to encourage folks, though, to get the boosters. Now we know that the boosters uh, really are important and they play a good role in terms of helping to mitigate uh, transferring the virus and keeping, keeping folks uh, safe. We want to continue to encourage our businesses to think about smart protocols. Um, encourage your, your staff to wear masks. Consider masks in your, in your business if that, makes, uh, you know, if, that, if that makes sense for your business. Um, and of course, vaccines as well is, is an important tool. Um, we know that with the influx of visitors coming to our community, that is obviously a vital part of our resort economy. Uh, and so we want to welcome the guests to Summit County, but we also want to be smart. And so we encourage and again asks our, um, our businesses and our community to stay vigilant. And then finally, um, if you are having your um, your uh, family gatherings, uh, we want you to think about masks, especially if you're indoors, especially if you're having friends over and you're not entirely certain who's vaccinated. Um, ask folks if they're feeling symptomatic. Um, if you are feeling symptomatic, go get a test. You know, the, the testing uh, is still available. And again, vaccines and boosters are still available, not only from the providers, but also from our local public health clinic. So lots of information on our website. Um, stay safe. We want to have a safe and healthy and successful holiday season and go into the new year uh, in, in good footing here in Summit County. Great, great. Uh, good tips. Uh, Tamara or Elizabeth, anything you'd like to add? I would just add plan ahead, you know, on the boosters. Um, it is a few yeah. weeks out for some of that. And so go ahead, get on the website, plan ahead, um, get those scheduled where you can. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right, great. Uh, last topic that we want to talk about today, um, there's been a lot of conversation. Um, this year around short-term rentals mm -hmm. and uh, you guys of course uh, undertook some changes around short-term rental regulations and update to the ordinance. Um, <coughs> we're taping today on the uh, 13th of December I think it is yeah. uh, and uh, you guys are scheduled to have sort of the second reading of an ordinance on the 16th and then a final public hearing on some code regulations on the 20th of December so depending on when you're actually watching this some of those code changes and that ordinance may have been adopted already but you want to talk just briefly about where we're at sure okay. um, I think by the time most people watch this um, it would have we would have already been voting but we do have a busy week ahead this week um, both Tuesday Thursday and the following Monday a week from today um, to be working on all of this as well we started this process well really almost a year ago when you guys started mm -hmm. but um, we have really kicked it up in the fall early fall late summer and said you know something's got to give as we continue to hear from our community and this is a topic that we're not only working on in, in Summit County this is across the country people are tackling short-term rentals for even here in very rural parts of Colorado are dealing with this, which they're very surprised and caught off guard. And so uh, this is the time for us to do something and really shape our community in the future and how short-term rentals work. Because there's no doubt many of these, I would say a majority, are really a commercial business being run out of a residential neighborhood. And so how does that fit and what makes sense? Um, with that, it looks like we um, still need to vote on the final reading. It did past the first reading to roll out a number of different license types. Um, we could be here for a long time to explain <laughs> all that, so I'll encourage people to go to our website. But basically there will be a license type for resort areas in our um, community, um, licenses for primary residences, for second homeowners, and then uh, I would say 365 STRs, those year-round rural commercial ones, and how those fit in our community. Those would be more rare, but there are certain instances that it works really well. It's say a corporate retreat for multifamilies that are 
coming, um, et cetera. So dig into our website. Um, we'll, we'll have it all on there. It is posted already. Um, so people can see we did this with a lot of input. We worked with property management companies, realtors, um, input from STR owners, community members, um, folks that live in neighborhoods that are like STRs are really difficult to live next door to. But then other folks that own STRs that are longtime locals that said, here's how I run mine. You know, this is what I do. And so we received a lot of input through multiple open houses. We had a survey with a ton of respondents in that that really helped, I would say, craft and shape um, these these new, um, I don't want to call them restrictions because they're not always restrictions, but really these new policies that we're putting into place. We also had open houses on each side of the county where people could share their thoughts and really a huge um, shout out and thanks to our staff that really dropped everything to work on this nonstop for the past few months. We did initiate a moratorium that lasts until this week. Uh, that started in September and so that moratorium um, was really to allow us time to shape these policies. There were some exemptions and exceptions for that that were granted um, based upon, say, the sale of a property or construction, things like that. Um, so I think what I would want everyone to take away from this is our work that's going to finish in the next week doesn't end the work. Mm -hmm. That's just almost like phase one. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to spend lots of time over the next year continuing um, our work on short-term rentals and really looking into certain areas and certain neighborhoods because what we have seen is Summit County, especially unincorporated Summit County, it's very nuanced. There's areas that are very ripe and set up for short-term rentals, such as those resort areas of Keystone and Copper, but then there's other areas that are I would say complicated. And so we need to further do some work in refining that and working with stakeholders on that. We will be doing that work. And so I would not say that next week is a final thing. That's only just really the beginning of yeah. us continuing to do this. Yeah, great point. Uh, Josh or tomorrow, anything you'd like to add? No, I mean, I, we've tried to be as thoughtful as we can in this process to listen to everybody in Summit County and their perspectives. We really do want to achieve a balance between um, the needs of our workforce and our traditional workforce neighborhoods and the needs of the industry uh, because we recognize that the industry does bring some benefits, but you can't have an industry without a workforce. Um, so we've done a lot of listening. We've done a lot of looking at data, and this is the first step. This is just the beginning, and we're going to have to continue to have these kinds of conversations with our community just like we do with any of the industries in Summit County um, as we move forward into the future. Great. And I think the key word you both said was balance and we know that the yeah. short-term rental uh, industry is only one tier of many tiers as it relates to our housing plan, as it relates to uh, creating more workforce housing, uh, mm -hmm. creating diverse options for our workforce. Uh, so lots more to come on that as well. Great. Yeah. Yep. Great. All right, wonderful. That's all we've got for today. So uh, stay tuned uh, to the channel for more uh, great local programming, and uh, we'll see you in the new year. And happy holidays, right. everybody. Happy holidays.